Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to start a Python project where we'll be making an IP scanner. This will introduce us to a couple of libraries and help us to start to go over some best practices in your Python code and also start showing you how you'd want to walk through your code testing bit by bit to make changes and to get the results that you want. This will be a multi-part video because I will go into multi-threading and making several functions and I don't want to info dump you all just in one video. So with that, hope you enjoy and let's get into the video. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio Code where we get started on this project. And the first library that we're going to import that'll be the heart of this project is going to be subprocess. A subprocess is a library that allows Python to basically have its own terminal to run commands in. We'll just come down here. And from this, we're going to be using the function called popen. And we're going to be telling it we want to run ping. We want to send one packet. That's the dash C1 here. And next we will give it the IP address. I'm going to give it the IP address of the machine that I'm on. And do note the formatting when you're using popen. You do have to break each uh, string that you would normally just type in and then do space. You have to break it up into its own little thing here. So if we run this, you can see that we get the same output down here that we would if we were running the ping command ourselves in a command prompt or a terminal. Okay, so what if we want to do this, but then have our program test for a condition to then do something or to print a certain statement out? Well, the first thing we need to do is to set this to a variable. And normally when you set something to a variable, it will just automatically save it in to that variable so you can access it later. But I want to show you this. Yeah, popen functions a little differently. You actually have to tell it that you don't want the output printed, that you want it saved in that variable, and we will do that by adding, move my mouse here, std out equals subprocess.pipe. That'll tell it that any output you get from this command, save it into the variable, and don't print it out to screen. So if we run it again, you see we didn't get any print out there. Couldn't clear that. What does it look like when it's saved in a variable? Let's go ahead and just do a print statement there for it. And you see we get this function callback. We're not able to access the actual output of the command just by this. We have to use another function called communicate. And that tells popen that we want to actually see the output and be able to talk back and forth because with this you can actually also automate input as well. So now if we run it, you see we get a list with two parts in it. The first part is our output, but it looks a little different. If you notice it has this B in front of it, that means it's a byte string. And basically for our purposes here, byte string just means that instead of acting upon formatting, it shows you what the formatting code is. So this slash n would normally just mean a new line, but here we see the slash n instead. If we want to access just our result and print it out in a way that we're familiar with, how would you go about doing that? Well, it's simple enough. We know its location. It's the first part of the list. We'll put a zero there. And we'll do decode utf8. And now we'll run it again. And there you go. Now it's in the format that we're used to seeing. So now we know how to get the result, save it to a variable. We know how to access the result. So how, what's the next step to actually act upon a condition in the result? Well, first off, we need to find a condition in the result that we're expecting if the IP address is up. And with this one, it's pretty easy. We're going to go off this one received. Because if it pinged an IP address and there was no machine active, this would show zero received. And since we're only doing one packet, this is going to be the simplest one. So I'll just, whoops. Let me do the correct way to copy. There we go. And we'll come back up here. We'll get rid of this decode because we're not going to need it for this. We're going to use an if statement to test for this condition. So we'll go if one received in. And what this will do 
is it'll look for this string inside result, the first part in the list, see if it's there. But remember, that's in bytes. And this right here is just a regular string. How we'll get around that is we'll just simply put a B right here in front. So if this returns true, we want to print address is up. And then we'll come down here, do an else statement. So that way if it's false, we'll get address is down. There we go. All right, so now if we run, let's clear our terminal here. Let's run this again. There we go, we get address is up. So it's a pretty simple and straightforward way of running a command and getting a result and then testing for a result. Now with this, we're only testing one IP address. So what if we wanted to test multiple IP addresses? There's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, for this video, we're going to use a for loop. And in our next video, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in a function. So right now, come up here and do for IP in range one to 255. Now, if you're not familiar with for loops and with the range function, what this will do is it'll start on the number one and it'll go through every iteration going up by one until it gets to 255. Now, the reason we are starting on one, if you're not familiar with networking, is because we are on a home network. That's a slash 24, which means it has a full 256 addresses that's uh, able to be used to assign. And in zero, in this case, our first address that's what's called a network identifier. Technically, that can be assigned to a machine, but it should never be assigned to a machine, so I always exclude it when I'm doing these things. Now, this will actually stop at 254, which is where we want, because 255 is the broadcast address, so we're gonna leave it there. Now, we'll come down here, and I prefer to do string formatting in Python the simple way. So, put an F here, and that'll tell Python that we want to, we're gonna be doing some formatting in here and we'll do open curly brackets and just type in our variable there, IP. So what this will do is it'll set IP to one and then come down here, run this command and when it sees IP over here, it will replace that with the number one. Now with the way we have this right here, this would run through everything. It, it would only test the condition on the last IP address of 254. Let's come over here, back this up one, highlight and hit tab to move it over. So now what it will do is it will test every IP address as it loops through. And we'll run this. And now you're going to see why I decided to go with multi-threading with my personal project. Because as you can see, this is kind of slow. We've already tested three addresses. It takes a while to do this. That is the reason I decided to go multi-threading because it is faster. There is one thing that I like to do is I like to see the output of the address that was tested. Since we are in this for loop here, what we can do is come down here. We'll put an F in front and we can just type out the IP address. And we'll do the curly bracket IP like that again, space. And we can just copy that, come down here, paste it in, put an F in front. And now what this will do is when it comes down here to print, it will also print out the IP address that was tested. And there it goes. Oh yeah, I forgot to put a dot. <laughs> yeah, simple little mistake. But as you can see here, it does print out the IP address. So we'll just fix that there. So now we have a way to run a command for multiple IP addresses and to test each one to see if it's up or down. As you can see, this goes line by line by line. And if you're testing a full IP range of your house, one is slow, but two, you're gonna have a lot of output to your screen. There is a way that we can set this up to where it'll print out which IP is testing. And when it comes across one that's up, it will print out like what we have here, address such and such is up, go to a new line, and then print out what it's testing. For that, we're going to get rid of this else statement because we're not going to need it. We'll come up here. We'll type in print. Actually, don't forget our F. Testing 192.168.1. Make sure you put that dot there before the IP. And we'll come over here. And before we leave this line, 
right here in front of the close parentheses, we're going to do comma, space, and equals, open paren, backslash, r. Now this is a carriage return. Remember when we were looking earlier at that byte string, we saw the backslash n? This is another type of formatting string. What this does is return the cursor back to the beginning of the current line. Let's go down here and clear. Now let's run this. So you can see, now it says testing 1.1, testing 1.2, and it's going to go over that. And then when it eventually does find an IP address, it will actually print that out, make a new line, and then continue from there. Now this will take a while. Let's go ahead and change our range up here. we'll just test 10 IP addresses there. So let's clear this, and we'll show you what it looks like when it finds one. It's 125, 26, 27, and there we go. Now he says it's up. Simple and easy peasy. This to me is a much cleaner way to run the code and a much cleaner way to keep your terminal. Once that finishes, it will actually just go back to our terminal prompt. That line will be cleared. See, there we go. Alrighty, so we're going to call it right there for this video. In the next one, like I said, we're going to look at making this into a function, and we're going to start working with some best practices for Python about formatting your code, making your code easier to follow. Alrighty, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If there's something that you may have done a little different, or you may have a question, feel free to leave a comment down below. I do read those and I'll be more than happy to get back to you and have a discussion. Well, until next week, hope you have a good one.